So what you're looking at here is a word clock. This is a clock I've been working on since December. It's actually supposed to be a Christmas gift for someone, but I wasn't able to complete it on time, so here we are in January with what I think is now the finished product. So a word clock is a clock that tells you the time, but it tells you the time different than most clocks will tell you the time. A standard clock has, you know, two hands that tell you one the hour and the other one the minute, or a digital display which gives you the digits of the time. This clock does neither of those things. Instead, it tells you the time in the English language. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I woke up, the clock might say, it is 7 o'clock, or it is 5 minutes after, or 10 minutes after 7 o'clock. You kind of get the point. It forms complete sentences to tell you the time. So how did we accomplish that? And if you look at the back of the clock, you can actually see what makes it tick. You can see all these ribbon cables coming out and going into the clock, which we'll get to in a minute. But if you look here, you can actually see the brains, which is an Atmega 368 chip. However, when I programmed this clock and was getting things working, I did all the development on an Arduino Leonardo. And that was just an easy thing for me to do. And so when I was ready to actually produce the clock in this board, I programmed that code onto an Atmega 368 so it could be embedded in the final project. I have a couple ICs that help the Atmega 368 because honestly there's not enough pins on that chip to control all 24 of the words I need to display. And these helper ICs are shift registers. So what they do for me is I have serial data that I can pump out of my microcontroller and then these ICs there's three of them. Each of them can take in serial data and turn it into parallel data. So using these three shift registers, I can then pump out 24 bits of serial data, and that will cascade down the shift registers and give me 24 bits of parallel data. So that 24 bits of parallel data that I'm getting from my shift registers then needs to be made into something useful. I can't directly connect the LED lines and ground them through the shift registers because it's too much current for them to handle. Well, actually, it might be okay, but to be on the safe side, I decided to use these Darlington Array chips. So there's really nothing special here with the Darlington Arrays, other than that they turn my logic level output into something that's actually doing something. So I'm grounding the current through the LEDs as needed. And so the only other interesting things on this board are, of course, I have a voltage regulator. Um, that gives me 5 volts of power for my 12 volt input. The LEDs are run at 12 volts for efficiency, really, and so I needed 5 volts for the logic, and so that's what that does there. Then I got two buttons to set the time. So now I've opened up the back of the clock, and you can see a lot of wires and a lot of metal. So what I have going on here is I have these ribbon cables that are connected to the groups of LEDs, really, that control each board. So some words have more LEDs than others, depending on the length of the word, of course, but the key thing to note here is I have the resistors here instead of on the main board. And the reason I did that well was frankly I didn't want to take up a lot of room on the main logic board. And it was easier for me to solder the LEDs on here while I was putting them into the back of the foam cord. So now that I've opened up that board you can actually see the baffles and those baffles contain the light. So if I didn't have the baffles there then there'd be a lot of spillage when the LEDs turned on and other words are lined up that I didn't want to light up. So it turns out there was a problem with my original clock design. The way a microcontroller or a processor keeps time is by counting the number of clock cycles that have gone by and it knows how long each one of those clock cycles is supposed to take. So it knows the duration of those clock cycles and it can just add up all those durations and it gives you the current time relative to some previous time. So it's an integrative process, in other words. Now the problem with that is, it can count the clock cycles no problem. There's not an inaccuracy in that. However, if the interval of time is at all inaccurate, it's going to add up because of the fact that it's an integrative process. So I thought I was going to make a brilliant decision and with my embedded processor not have an external crystal because I thought I'd be saving money and time by not having that crystal. So these at mega 368 chips have an internal resonator that operates supposedly at 8 megahertz. When I looked into it, the accuracy of that measurement could be off by a couple percent. And not only that, it functions and it varies greatly as a function of temperature. 
So theoretically, you could determine the speed of the internal resonator and then calibrate or compensate for it by writing a fix in your code. And that's one way to do it. Um, I don't think that's a smart way to do it. And even then, it's still going to fluctuate enough that your clock's not going to be super accurate. So there's two other options that you can employ. One of them would be to use a crystal, um, an external crystal. So here I have these 20 megahertz crystals, and you can just pop one of those with the appropriate capacitors, and that can give you a speed accurate to within 10 parts per million. So that's 10 over 1 million, which is much better than 1% or even 0.1%. However, if you do the math, you quickly can determine that your clock's still going to be off by a couple minutes per year, and maybe that's okay with you. I mean, honestly, that would probably be okay. I trust the user to reset their clock every now and then anyway. But since I was already going to have to modify my design, and I'm not mass producing these things, I decided to go with a different option. I have a real-time clock chip laying around, and all I needed to do with that is add a 32.768 kilohertz crystal to it. And the combination of those two things not only gives me a super precise time, it also gives me a really cool feature which allows me to keep time even if the user unplugs the clock. And the way I do that is I have a coin cell battery hooked up to the RTC real-time clock, and if they unplug it, it pulls charge from that uh, coin cell battery and keeps its state information. So once you set the time in the RTC, you can unplug the clock, and it'll keep its time for 5 or 10 years. So I went with that option, and all I have to do now is incorporate it into the final design. And that's pretty much all there is to my word clock. So if you want to build your own, I encourage you to check out the links I'm posting below, because the inspiration for this project was someone named Doug Jackson, who has a bunch of word clocks and a bunch of versions that you can check out. So check out those links. I hope you liked the video. I know it was kind of detailed. If it was too detailed, then please let me know. If it wasn't detailed enough, then please let me know. All right, see ya.